All right, I thought we'd talk about Atlas Lays here a little bit. Um, I've, you know, covered mills and shapers, and I saw a couple lays cut up, come up. I thought we might as well uh, kind of go over them, and I'll give you my thoughts. And you know, this may be a, this is an informational thing as much as anything else. Um, now there's a couple of 10 inches that I wanted to look at. I believe they were both 10 inches and we'll get to those. But as I look here, I see a six inch Atlas lathe, good condition, runs great. Lots of tooling, complete setup. This does look to be complete and I don't have a whole lot of knowledge of this particular model of lathe, so I'm not going to delve into it too deep. Um, this is one of the square head six inch lathes is what this is. This is uh, Atlas's later model machine um, and they're wanting opening bid is twelve hundred dollars buy it now for sixteen hundred um, of course like most of the things I see why this is way too much money for a six inch lathe let's read the description I haven't read it at all yet Atlas lathe good condition runs great lots of tooling complete setup conditions used local pickup in East Peoria Illinois well, okay, this is a distance between center 10 to 20 Atlas 618, which is, this is the latest, or the later model of, um, of 6 inch. Like I say, it's the square head stock. So, um, it's all that's been around for a while. I don't know a whole lot about these, really. Um, basically going to be a 618, except, like I say, the square head, as far as I know. I, I think it's probably an okay machine, you know, is a six inch used, and it has been used, lathe worth $1,200. You know, I'm not going to comment one way or the other as far as really trying to editorialize that. I, I don't think so. You know, I think as a entry level lathe, well, I think that's an awful lot of money to give. Anyway, let's go on to see what else I see. Um, Okay, this is this is one of them. This is the latest one that I've seen that I looked at. This is a 10 inch lathe, Atlas Grassman lathe, 10 inch or 10. Description says, I have for sale an Atlas Grassman 1036 lathe. Runs on single phase 110. Gears are in great shape. Bed is in great shape. Yeah. Comes with three jot shock and lantern style post. Pretty sound machine still with an exclamation point. Located in Bloomington, Illinois. Can deliver local for a fee. Willing to ship. Just ask for a quote. Now, let's look at this little machine. And it's been a while since I've looked. Um, yeah, seller has been around a little while. Nothing, nothing spectacular. Let me just blow these pictures up and just do an overview. Link belts on it. I don't care for the link belts, but that's nonetheless. Now. The things I see about this machine, this is a vertical counter shaft machine, and I believe it showed, let me look and see what the, I believe it showed the data plate for this, let me look at it. It's a V54, so it's not a 36 inch machine, it's a V54, which would be the vertical 54 inch, 036231 is going to be the serial number on it. Now. The things I see wrong with this, it's got a half horsepower Dayton motor, you know, which is probably fine. You know, it's not an original Atlas motor. I've talked about good and bad of Atlas motors before, so. Okay, and I'm just going to go through that. I'm not going to go through with a fine tooth comb on, on zooming in on each of these pictures, but I'll go over the pictures. This machine was a vertical 54 inch, and I believe they discontinued this machine well, they discontinued um, all of the atlases in 57. So anything we look at in these 10 inch lathes is going to be basically 65 years or older. So that's something to keep in mind when they start telling you that they're in excellent condition. You know, after you, uh, I've hit over 60 years old now and I'm not as in as good condition as I was before. So, but nonetheless, um, the handles appear to be intact, doesn't appear to be broken off. Um, nitpicking at it, there's no um, lead dipper in the tail stock, but that's just something I just now noticed. Got a link belt, I don't care for the link belts, but neither here nor there. The one vertical guard is quite a bit 
different color than the the right one than the left one. Um, that may have been changed at some point in time. It may be. There's been quite a few things changed on this machine. Um, the counter shaft assembly looks to be basically original, but the large um, pulley that's got the the fancy little scrolling on the inside is has been replaced with just a. It's got a three cut out pulley on there. That's not original to this lathe, I don't believe. Um, so your your lost originality there to start with. This lathe has a quick change gearbox, which would have been added later. This would have been a change gear lathe. Um, so you've got a modification there. So when I look at this machine now, we're looking at a parts machine. This has been, once you start doing stuff like that, we've been making modifications or assembling one from parts. Now, I doubt that the machine is entirely a parts machine. I believe it's basically the machine that, that it started out as, but a gear, quick change gearbox has been added to it. Um, so somebody's done something there, and you can tell that just by the color of it. It's, it's completely different color-wise. The, um, well, I'll just go through the pictures and we'll come back to that. Looks like there's a lantern tool post on it. The uh, saddle and, and apron look to be complete, whether it's, um, I don't believe that's a power cross feed machine. There's some staining on the bed. You can see the grooves going down the, you know, going longitudinally down the bed and everything. It's it's used and abused, you know. Um, bed in great shape, I don't, I don't believe so. You know, I believe when you get to measuring these, they're going to very definitely be worn. Um, and this is, you know, I keep harping on this, and this is the way everyone lists them. They're always in really good condition, minimal bed wear and all that. And the reality is it's at least 65 years old. It's not true. You know, it's just literally not true. Now, when we look at it from the headstock end, quick chain gearbox has been put on. Uh, the guarding is somebody's sheet metal something or other that they put on there. That's not even close to being original there. Um, you know, that's uh, something that's been scabbed on there. Like I say, the pulley's been changed on the counter shaft assembly. That's been, that's kind of stuck on there. That's not an atlas number that's on that pulley. The wiring looks... Well, I don't remember if there was a switch on the front of this machine. Let's look and see again. Um, the wiring is kind of cobbled together here. Coming out the back, it looks like there looks to be a switch on the front of the machine, as would have been original to it. Um, but it's, it's kind of hodgepodge as it comes back out of the back side of the headstock. So that's kind of what I see with this machine, you know, $1,800, no, we're way overpriced. You know, you've got a parts machine, um, seven, $800 machine at the outside, you know, at the very most. Um, yep, it's got a, it's got a quick change gearbox, but so what, you know, that's not, it's a Tim Key bearing headstock. Yeah, I think this is kind of cobbled together a little bit. A, a good portion of it is original, and it looks like the main things that have been changed have been with the quick change gearbox. But to me, people talk about collector value, which I don't, I've said before, I don't consider an Atlas machine to be a collector machine. Um, it doesn't matter what they are, they're, they're user machines for the home shops. That's, that's all they should be considered. And when you look at them from that respect, you need to be comparing them with the other options that are available outside of being an Atlas. So um, for $1,800, you can have a far more capable machine um, in far better condition than this is going to be. So, you know, keep things in perspective, get these back into line of the price that they should be. And, and I give my opinion on prices. You know, you don't have to certainly take that. You can do whatever you want. But um, if we want these machines to be affordable and to be able to be had by our children and future generations, why we need to get these down to where cost is reasonable on them. And um, we can afford to buy them and buy replacement parts for them. So that was the first one I saw. 
Um, there was one other one here that was that was involved with that. Now I don't see it here. I wonder if it's if somebody was foolish enough to buy it. Let me go back. I saved that machine, so I should have it here. Okay, here it is, I believe. Vintage Atlas V48 10 inch lathe, catalog extracts available. Um, yeah, that's all it says in the description. Model year 1966. Model year 1966. So if we look at, um, if I look at my little history timeline here, in 1957, the 10-inch Atlas lathe was discontinued. So I find it very odd that we're able to have a 10-inch V48 that was manufactured in 1966. So take that for what it's worth. There's only a few pictures here. Um, there's only three pictures here. I don't know that there's anything really worth looking at. This is a older vertical countershaft lathe, link belts on it. Um, looks to be relatively original lantern style tool post. Handles look like they're all intact. Um, may very well be all original paint. Let's see here. Now the countershaft assembly, the pulleys, all of the pulleys look to be a lighter blue color. Now that may be something where they're, the link belts are running in there. Um, I honestly don't know, but that looks a little bit odd to me. A little bit brown colored on a lot of it. Three jaw chuck. Um, looks to be a relatively honest little machine you know who knows how much wear is in it fourteen hundred dollars is too much you know that's a there's there's virtually no tooling other than the, there's one tool holder there that i see on a lantern tool post um you know that's a three hundred dollar machine uh, maybe a little bit more than that to the right person but um not to me you know, earlier machine, I believe, probably, that may have the smaller, uh, smaller lead screw on it, no power on the compound, you know, early machine, um, yeah. So, that's my take on machines, you know, it's back to the thing of trying to make these affordable again. So hopefully you, as you evaluate these machines, you've got a little bit better perspective of what I'm seeing on them. You can add that to your opinions and hopefully come up with a informed decision without somebody just saying, I've got a great Atlas lathe that I'm gonna sell you for way too much money. So, you know, do your research, do your due diligence and um, make good choices and you'll have a machine that you'll be happy with for years down the road. Um, I think Atlas machines have been and continue to be overpriced. I think we have brought um, some of the prices down a little bit with my little spiel here. And I think maybe it has, um, I definitely think that we're getting a little bit more honest description of parts from some of these sellers, but um, it, it's not enough, you know, to, to spend $1,400 for a machine with no tooling whatsoever uh, i think there's other options that are out there that are better available for them we have a little bit of a cult following on these atlas machines just like there is for the south bends and things like that but we also have to keep in perspective what we're what we're buying why we're buying them and what we're going to use them for so anyway hopefully you find this a little bit interesting comments or suggestions leave them in the comments section for me below
And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch that.